Welcome to this tutorial on how to set up the Planetary Processing Multiplayer SDK in Default. Let's start by opening Default and creating a new project. The new project will need access to the Planetary Processing SDK. In the Asset panel, open up the game.project file, then navigate to the Dependencies section. We are going to add the Planetary Processing SDK itself and the default protobuf. Both of these dependencies are required to connect to the Planetary Processing Game server. Don't forget to use fetch libraries to add them both to your project. They should appear in the Assets panel on the left hand side. Now that the SDK is installed, let's create a game object in our main collection to handle our connection to the game server. Add the PP Master component to the server connection game object. This will pass information to the server about the main player character and which game to connect to. To distinguish between this client and other player clients, we are going to call our player main character. Create a game object called main character and reference it in the player URL of the master component. Your game ID will help connect you to the game server. It can be found on the planetary processing website in the game section of the dashboard. Add two components to your main character object. First, add the PP Entity component file, so your player will be visible to the game server. Then, add a sprite component, so your player will be visible to you and everyone else. Currently our sprite component has no image. You can drag and drop raw image files into the assets pane. For efficiency in game, default stores raw image files in a sprite sheet called an atlas. We're going to create an atlas with all our entities stored in it. In the demo game, we have three entities, cats, trees, and players. For simplicity, our main character is going to use the same image as other players. Select the entity atlas as our image source for our main player character. Then set the default animation as player. Now we can see our player. Because we are using a very sharp pixel art style for this tutorial, the sprite is blurred by min-mag filtering. For a clearer look, we can change the texture filtering settings in the graphics section of the game.project file. Now that we have our player character object, we can start making a script component to connect it to the game server. Once the script is finished, we will attach it to the player object. We are going to be putting all our code into a single script to handle the server connection, cameras, and player movement. For a larger project, you'll want to split these up into separate scripts. We're only going to need the init and on input functions. In the init, we need two messages, one to establish keyboard inputs for our player, and another to establish a connection to our game server using the game object with the master component. The pp init message here has an empty table as the parameter. Normally this would take a username and password table as an input. To use an empty parameter instead, go to the game settings on the planetary processing dashboard and enable anonymous authentication. Or you can go to the player settings and here you can create a username and password for your player. We will use the joined boolean to record when a player joins and prevent them from doing so more than once. To enter the game, we can set up the on input function to trigger the player joining the server when the spacebar key is pressed. Like the pp init message, to join, we send the hash pp join to the server connection game object with the pp master component. Once the player is connected, we set the join boolean to true to disable the spacebar. The pp join message doesn't take any additional parameters. It simply enters the player into the world using an established and authorized connection. Entities are the backbone of planetary processing. In default, entities are generated by factories. The factories must be named according to the backend entity type, such as cat factory. The entity itself is designed according to a prototype. These are created in the assets panel as a game object. The entity prototype will be formed in a similar way to the main character. It will need an entity component file and a sprite. We can use the same entity atlas as we did earlier for the main character sprite to create our cat. 
Unlike the main character, the entity prototype doesn't go directly into our main collection. Instead, it is referenced by the factory. Connections to the game server will fail unless you've got all the entities in the server-side code matched up with factories in the default project. For the server-side demo, we only have to worry about other players, cats, and trees. So now we just need to make a tree factory and a player factory to represent the trees and other players in the game world. Like the cat prototype and the main character, the tree and player prototypes both need two components, the entity component and the sprite component. Once you have your entity factory set up, all you would need to do is attach the script to your main character and then launch your game from the planetary processing website. However, the camera would be off center, there'd be no background and you wouldn't be able to move. As you can see, the planetary processing SDK doesn't need much for a minimal working example. It fundamentally needs a player character, a master component, entities, and a script to bring them all together and connect to the game server. In order to see your character and the game world clearly, we're going to add a background, a camera, and we're also going to make some changes to the script to allow for movement. Start by making the camera stand game object. This needs to be a child object of the main character in order to follow it. The camera stand needs a camera component in order to work. The stand acts as a way of moving the camera forwards and backwards, left and right in 3D space. Since it is a child of the main character, it will follow the main character's position in space. We're going to adjust its relative position slightly so that the camera is looking at the main character and not on top of it. To enable the camera, we need to tell the inbuilt render script to use cameras and then to use this specific camera. Now that our camera is all set up, we can start making a background. We'll start by making an atlas for it. Just as we did with the Entities Atlas, you can drag and drop images into the Assets panel to act as sources for your atlas. The background isn't an entity as defined by our server-side code, so we can add it straight to the main collection instead of making a prototype and factory. The background doesn't need an entity component, all it needs is a sprite component. Now we have our background set up and our camera to follow the player. Unfortunately, the player cannot move yet. We can resolve this by opening the game.inputbindings settings from the assets pane. In the input bindings window, we can choose which keys trigger which actions. As you may remember from earlier, we set the spacebar as the key trigger for the player join using the action key underscore space. We can add the WASD keys in the same way to enable player movement. The position change variable records how much the player has moved by. The send movement boolean allows a message to be sent to the game server via the master component, giving it data about the player's movement. The PP message sends the X, Y, and Z data changes. The server-side code receives this message and chooses what to do with it. In this case, it moves the player. We'll start with just downward movement when you press the S key. Then we can add the other movement keys later. The movement input handling was the final part of our main character script. Now that it's complete, we can add the component file main character script to our main character. We'll do one more quick tweak to the camera parameters so that the game window maintains its aspect ratio. Then we can go to the game dashboard on the planetary processing website and launch our game. We can view our game world and all our entities on the game dashboard map. Cats and trees are marked as purple and cyan cubes. You can change these in the game settings. Build the project to launch the game. We can now see our game world. To join, press space. In the demo, the server-side code for cats and trees has procedural generation and movement inbuilt. Although we filled out all the input bindings, the script currently only recognizes the S key, so we're only able to move downwards. Updating our script with the WASD keys will allow us to move in all directions. As you move, the world will generate chunks around you as if you're on a treadmill. Chunks currently not in use or without an entity chunk loader will despawn to save on resources. 
the chunk size was defined when you first created your planetary processing game. As we walk around, you may notice some lag with the chunk loading. Here, it isn't caused by the network connection, but by the error we have in console. The chunks are struggling to load because we've maxed out the number of sprites available in our default project, which has a maximum limit of 128. This can be resolved by opening the game.project file, navigating to the sprite section, and changing the max count to a higher number. This limit doesn't need to account for all the sprites in your game world. Most of the time, it will only need to register those sprites within a 3x3 grid around your player. You should now have a fully functioning default game using the planetary processing demo. To progress beyond the demo server, you can download the git repository from the game dashboard. You can edit the chunk and entity behavior in the lower code. Planetary processing entities use functions and the messaging system similar to default. Like our movement script earlier, you can use ppmessage to communicate with entities in the backend. Just remember, any changes to the server-side Lua files need to be reflected in your default project. So if you create a new entity, you need to have a new factory and a new prototype in your default project to reflect that. Thanks for watching this tutorial on how to integrate the default game engine with the planetary processing platform. Check out our other videos for more information on planetary processing and the other game engines we support.